Real World, Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Dorsey here today on the Bonsai Balcony. We're going to do, we're going to hang out on our balcony underneath our cypress trees and we are going to uh, discuss watering. Uh, a cool thing happened uh, on our balcony earlier this week and uh, that cool thing was our trees began to uh, drink up the water. They began to soak up water in a manner that told me that they were well awake and uh, and we're well into spring. Uh, the calendar might say that it could still turn cold at any minute. We could still lose our buds, but on our balcony, everything is budding out. Everything is blooming. Uh, currently, on my seedling trays that are in the kitchen, our count is at uh, 23, which means that we are 13. 13 away from uh, having a full house on that guy. 36, 36 seedlings out of 36 seeds planted. What we're going to talk about today is watering. Uh, when you're new to bonsai, you are you go into it maybe a little apprehensive because you know it to possibly be difficult. And uh, what's hard about something that's difficult is all the things that you don't know. A lot of times this comes down to just watering you know there's a lot of things with bonsai that you could live to fight another day if you had that watering thing down or if you could get that watering thing down before it proved detrimental to something the other stuff the other stuff will give you a minute you may not uh, come across an instance where you need to know everything there is to know about pesticides if you learned about watering first. If the tree was healthy and and you picked up with the right watering regime, it could maintain healthy for quite some time before you learned about feeding or pest prevention or uh, ramification or any of that stuff. Uh, a lot of that stuff will, will give you time to learn, but uh, the part where people get bonsai and lose trees is quite often can come down to watering. So you um, maybe know that um, you have a lot to learn. That can be intimidating. You may have been told that if uh, a, that a certain species of bonsai is hard to grow. People will tell you that Japanese black pines are hard to grow or people will tell you that they've had a Japanese black pine and it died. You know, they got into bonsai, they got a Japanese black pine, they brought it home and it died. Um, that's a pretty common story. Um, a, a lot of times, people will be told, don't water too much, or if you don't water it, it'll die. Okay, all right. If, if I don't water it, when? If I don't water it once a week, if I don't water it once a month, if I don't water it, every day if I don't water this every day it'll die because it's a tiny pot and a tiny tree after you learn uh, how to water bonsai then you have to figure out what species require more or less of what you've learned and then deeper than that you will have to learn again on smaller trees. It's easier to keep bigger trees watered than it is smaller trees for some people. Uh, and it was for me until I learned a few tricks. This is a ponderosa pine. This is the Japanese black pine. When you grow Japanese black pine, when you get a Japanese black pine and take it home, you may ask the gardener, how do I care for this as compared to my wisteria or my cypress or my maple? And they would say, if you overwater this Japanese black pine, 
it'll turn yellow. If it goes yellow long enough, your roots will begin to rot and the tree will die. So you can definitely overwater a Japanese black pine. This is a ponderosa. Oh, how do I not? When do I know when it's time to water a Japanese black pine? And a lot of times people will tell you to rake the soil back, you know, maybe that deep on the pot. See, it's all the way up to the edge. Maybe rake it back that deep and see what it looks like that far down. If it turns a dark color, like it's moist, like if you were to grab that soil and, and make it into a fist shape and open your hand and it would stay in that fist shape, right? That moist soil that stays compacted like that. That would tell you that check it again later, not now. That need water now, check it later. Um, how much later depends on how hot it is. If it's a temperate climate, check it tomorrow. If it's uh, going to warm up today, check it before it gets super hot again and see how you're doing. Um, and that's for a tree that uh, will take water every day typically, but if you overwater it, you'll cause problems. Ponderosa. Get a ponderosa pine. Ask your bonsai gardener, how do I care for this bonsai tree? They say, well, if you water it as much as you water your Japanese black pine, you will likely kill it. You will have to water this tree less. And you go, okay, it takes less water. And if I water it too much, I will kill this tree before I'll kill my Japanese black pine. So you go home and are like, what does that mean? What is too much? What is too little? How do I know what it looks like in this pot when I stop watering it? How do I know what it looks like? You know, I've already alluded that we might rake the soil away, but we don't want to go digging in the roots. We just want to scrape a little bit of the top soil away and have a, have a little peek down in there. If that's dry, then it, it might be that we just stopped a little too soon and it picked up moisture a little closer in there in the center, or it might be that it's too dry. So knowing that you're not supposed to overwater something is not the same as knowing how much that is, right? So you can be uh, told, if you overwater this, you'll kill it. And you're like, okay, noted. Now that you've got me scared, I'll drive home and wonder what the hell overwatering means. Uh, or watering as opposed to what. So if this were a larger tree, uh, like for instance, my 75 year old Japanese black pine, it doesn't get watered every day. I check it and do the soil thing. I water it sometimes two times a week, sometimes three times a week. The 17 year from seed, which is a, um, Typically, typically this tree gets watered every day. On a really hot day, I will a couple of times in the summer water it twice a day or I have to be ready to, you know. I'll just say it this way, once or twice in the summer I will probably water this tree more than once in the day. Uh, but as a rule, a tree this size takes water once a day. So when you get used to that, and then with the larger tree in a pot this big, that's this tall, I water that two or three times a week based on my raking the soil back and checking the substrate down in there and seeing whether it's hot or cold. And that's based on our 70 degree temperatures that we have here. When it gets hotter, the substrate will, uh, will evaporate off the water faster and the trees will drink water at a higher rate which is to say that water passes through the vascular membrane on the needles and gets exchanged into oxygen at a higher rate it's like picture a needle as a big tube with a bunch of open windows and this ball bearing of water comes rolling into it and fills that little hole and as the breeze comes by, that ball bearing of, of water evaporates and the one behind it rolls up and takes its place. Times the entire vacu vascular system all the way into the ground. It just conveyor, ba conveyor belts right on up. As opposed to the Ponderosa, 
which don't really have those windows, they're closed. All the windows on the vascular system of the needles are closed. It's, it's trained to hang on to its water, to not move it, but to hold it. And for that reason, the tree moves so much slower. And um, it takes longer to move water. It takes longer to, to uh, go through its water. And that's why we that's why we don't water it as much as we water our pine. Now, having gotten used to somewhat say you've been watering bonsai trees for a couple of years, you know not to disappear. You know, regular sized bonsai trees, you know not to disappear for a week uh, without having somebody check on your trees for you and all of that. Then you decide that you want to get into smaller trees. You know, like I said, my larger needs water two to three times a week. My smaller, but still, uh, you know, seven, eight inch tall bonsai tree, it's watered every day, once or twice a year, it'll get watered more than once a day. Uh, but then when you deal with tiny trees, you're still gonna deal with that species, the way that you've learned that you have to deal with that species, but the smaller pot is its own thing yes it's a japanese black pine yes it'll take less water than a maple than a wisteria than a cypress yes it would like to dry out in between watering however this tiny little pot will get exceedingly hot if not washed this tiny little pot will dry out disproportionately fast as compared to the larger trees. When you look at this tiny tree in this tiny pot, that might be on the same scale as the larger 75 year old tree in that pot. But the time that it takes for both pots to dry out does not scale out this thing. Or maybe it doesn't, I'm just thinking of it wrong. It's that much faster. This will need to be watered every day. This may need to be watered uh, more than once a day on some days. And a little bit of insurance helps. I had a hard time growing small trees until I learned to do this tray. What that tray does is every time I water it, instead of the water running out, into my gutter and going into my vat. This water runs into this tray full of all the substrate and the trees in tiny little pots have an easier time doing something that a lot of plants and pots will do and that's shoot a root out of the bottom of the pot and run it into the substrate. When it comes to tiny trees, we encourage that. I don't cut them off the first time I see them. I don't pick up a pot, see a little white root coming out of the bottom and nip it off. That's that little tree's insurance policy against death on a hot day when I'm not here or I wasn't watching or whatever, right? Or the temperature just shot up. This wet substrate goes a long way towards keeping this pot from getting super super hot also if the tree has a root in here in this substrate and this substrate has cool water in it that almost works like a radiator the average temperature of the tree goes down because of the temperature of the moisture in this in that substrate where that root is that means that averaged in with the baking heat of that pot and the needles brings the overall down a little bit it, it's an insurance policy my ability to raise tiny trees went way up and i'm talking oaks pines maples my ability to get those guys to even go a year shot way up once i started using trays with substrate and they don't have to be ugly brownie tin like I have here. They could be, you know, some nice ceramic, some nice ceramic drip trays. Uh, I have had that catch me off guard. I had a drip tray 
that was uh, a cake tin and it the water level got high enough on the uh, on the pot that it killed the roots at the bottom of the pot and that little auto prune clogged up the pot on a Japanese black pine and nearly killed it. So you need to always be sure that your drip trays are drip trays and not drip pots that are um, sinking your trees. And I wasn't quite that lax as it sounds. I moved everything in the, in the living room for some construction when I moved it back out. That one got set in a different tray for a day or two and uh, that big a pot in a tray with that much water. First time I watered it, the water was up that high over the bottom of the pot and killed the layer of roots off that, that high. Aside from that, drip trays are great. They will keep you from pouring water on the people below you or pouring water out everywhere else. And it will help your little trees to have a, uh, a hedge against uh, death. Um, what I was saying earlier about, you know, if you overwater this tree, it will uh, die faster than this tree. So how do you know, you know, it's like if I'm just going to rake the soil off the top a little bit and read that substrate to see how that's doing, how am I going to do that on a tree that's going to want even less? How do I do that more, right? scare the hell out of me by telling me if I overwater this tree it'll die and then send me home not knowing what overwatering is it's kind of a cool joke I mean can you just see me sitting there in my bed with my eyes on with overwater <clears throat> when it comes to this tree and this tree they're potted in different substrates this is potted in boom mix akadama lava and uh, pumice this is potted in something that's heavier and loomier and chunkier. And it also has some charcoal that I don't know if I agree with or not, but it's the mix that it came with. And I didn't have any really chunky stuff. So when I repotted this out of a bigger pot to this pot, I went with the same substrate. But the reason it's got a bigger, heavier, chunkier substrate without as much organic matter in it is so the water, when I water this tree, it'll go right through it. It'll go right through the top and pour right on through. It'll wet down those roots. They'll all get sopping, soaking wet, but then the water goes all the way through the pot and it kind of pulls a vacuum as it goes through and brings in fresh oxygen behind it. And lava doesn't hold a lot of water, but a little, almost holds maybe a little, a little water. Pumice doesn't soak up a lot of water, but a little. The Akadama that's in there isn't much. The rest of it is rocky and stony. So the whole point to all of that is, is to allow this guy a chance to dry out as soon as possible. Uh, I don't know if you can see the tree behind me. That's a Ponderosa. It gets water once or twice a week. The small one, because it's a small one, that pot comes into play as much as the species comes into play. This thing in the winter and in the fall gets watered a couple of times a week, a little more than the bigger ones. And in the summer, it typically starts off every day dry. I give it a little while of that and then I'll water it. So even though it takes less water than, um, than the black pine, the part where it's in different substrate, that's in bigger, rockier substrate, means that the water doesn't stay in there as long. It percolates right on through, wets down the roots, and starts drying, and starts drying out within 30, 40 minutes of the water. That doesn't mean it's dry, but that means that process starts sooner, faster, in this rockier substrate that has less, less organic matter in it. The organic matter that it does get, it gets from the fertilizer that I feed it, which I low dose everything. Um, I low dose almost everything a year around. When my pines go off feeding, I pick up theirs, but my fertilizer is uh, vital gold, which are little, which are, little cubes 
little sugar cube size pellet on the punt tootsie rolls chunks. And uh, I picked those up before Campbell, about 30 days before Campbell cutting, so that I stopped feeding those black pines if they're in a bonsai pot so that we can restrict our noodle size. But anyway, that's a different story. Noodles are totally different than watering. But this comes back down to watering bonsai is the most difficult part about learning to do bonsai. There are trees for which watering bonsai is not an issue as in scary. If you can water that wisteria every day, it'll live. You can have that wisteria as a bonsai tree. You can have a bonsai tree that blooms for you every, every year and looks beautiful in your home. It smells very fragrant. Or you can have a bald cypress and uh, you could have a big, huge, thuck, chicky, chunky bald cypress. And you could set this pot in a vat of water uh, and take off and blow town for two weeks if you wanted to go if you wanted to go on that vacation or business called you away and the fact that it's in you, I'm not saying submerge the tree but I'm saying if you put it in a vat of water to where the roots wouldn't go completely dry over the time that you're gone bald cypresses stand in water sometimes their whole lives uh, it's what they do that's a tree that you could definitely have uh, you know, I usually tell people, if you can water it, you can keep it long enough to figure out everything else. But when it comes to a wisteria or a bald cypress, if you can just make sure the vat doesn't go dry certain times a year, you'll live to learn how to do everything else. Other things, not so much. You can't overwater this. You can't overwater that. And then trying to figure out those little idiosyncrasies. There's a couple of things that really help. I've said this before. This is two years old. This is one of my favorite little trees that we've done. It, to me, looks fantastic. It's really encouraging for somebody at novice of my level to have something that came out this twisted, this fat, this gnarly, this neat looking. And we just kind of paid attention to a couple of rules. One, it, it always stays in one of these trays. Uh, two, we did figure out what was too much and what was too little water. And we did that two ways. One, I stopped living and dying by whether or not my one pine or my one bonsai tree pine looked healthy or not. I found that by buying 10 seedlings at a time, I was spending less than $60 to my door and I had 10 little seedlings. Later, I would decide, let's go seeds. And for $17, I bought about 250 seeds. And we're going to have a ton of, of pines out of that. But uh, I digress. Those 10 seedlings that I bought and put in little cups, I immediately, every day I would water. And when you're looking at 10 trees, the first thing you learn is there's always one. There's always one. I don't care what the story is. It's, it, if, if you're talking about people, if you're talking about puppies, you're talking about trees, the story should always say, and there's always this one. So if you've got, if you order 10 trees and you're watering them and you're taking care of them and they all look pretty good, there's going to be this one, right? This one that all, all the rest of them doesn't look quite as good. Well, what if instead of 10 trees, you bought a tree and you got that one? You'd be taking that really personal when really the tree is just an a-hole. No, the tree's not really an a-hole. I'm just saying that you'd be taking this personal when that isn't on you. When you grow 10 trees, it's really easy to dial that in. You can water all of them, see that that's good. The next day, you can water all of them and you can go, yeah, I think this is pretty good. What if I held back a little bit on this one and just watered it tomorrow instead? And then all the rest of them, I do that. In a couple of days, I'll look at it and go, how did it respond to that? Wow, maybe it's greener than all the rest of them. So, okay, that kind of helps me tune that in. And you will get acquainted really, really fast. When it comes to something where it says, I'm totally not kidding with you. If you overwater with me, I will straight up die. Then you kind of need to figure that out maybe a little sooner. Because you don't want... It won't be the thing necessarily that kills the tree. It'll be one of the three things that kills the tree. And it's definitely a good one to start the ball rolling down that slippery slope of ill health. So what is a lot of water? 
What is less water? This guy got watered earlier today. The top of the substrate almost looks dry. While we started this video, as I was just doing my introduction, I stuck this little weenie skewer down in there. And when I pulled it out, I can see that that pot has moisture in it all the way up to where it was submerged. There's still plenty of moisture in there. Had it been in here, it would have told me about the same thing because that's how much has almost nothing will have uh, vaped off in the amount of time in the last two hours on a 65 degree day, even in this way. If I get up every day and I come out and I pull this dipstick and I look at it, it will tell me how much water is halfway down the pot, how much water is in the bottom of the pot, and me scratching the top of the surface wouldn't have told me that. What this taught me, three weeks of this, and I would know what this would say before I would pull it out of the pot. Like training wheels, right? For three weeks, I pulled this out and read it, and at some point, after about two and a half weeks, I went, I already knew it was going to stay that. So I know the three or four days of, of feeling really smug about me guessing what it was going to look like and being right, I realized I didn't have to do that anymore. And I took the training wheels out of all of my pots. But I wouldn't have gotten that feel for what is too much or too little watering. If I'd have been somebody's apprentice, where they had a thousand pines and we started repotting a couple of hundred pines every year, I would have figured that out really quick. But as Joe Blow, who likes bonsai, who has three trees, it, I would have been a long time reeling in what was going on down there just by looking at the top. A, a million repottings and I would, I would know what the top looks like versus what the center and what the bottom looks like. But one way I can know, I can, I can totally cheat that system, is with the dipstick method. And uh, I no longer use it because I no longer have to. But I would highly recommend it for anybody who's paranoid about whether they're overwatering or underwatering their trees. Or what their trees look like when the soft of the substrate looks dry and they've already been told, you know, and they're paranoid of overwatering. So yeah, when it comes to some trees, some trees are totally serious about uh, not being watered every day. And some trees are like, and I'm totally serious, if you don't water me every day, I will sure pack up and uh, be gone. So that's the part of bonsai that we always, as beginners, need to move past first. A lot of times our losses are hinged on that. Sometimes we even come into bonsai tree with the misconception that learning bonsai is not to learn when to water, but how long you can go without watering. And as a practice to try to keep the tree small, that's not the only way. I'm not telling anybody how to do it, but there are also ways to make trees small where you give them all the water they could ever want, you give them the food they could ever want, and then we train them in certain ways with other techniques. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to say keeping, a, keeping your bonsai trees happy, healthy, and hydrated is the best way to ensure that you have a bonsai tree tomorrow or that you don't start, you don't start a spiral that um, ends up being in, you know, one of the other mirrored things that can take out a tree. Um, that's kind of bonsai deep. That covers bonsai's little and bonsai's big. Like I said, a tree with substrate in it, I mean a tray with substrate in it, uh, every time we water this stuff stays moist. I don't want this, you know, and in the summer especially, this dries out not as fast as the pots do, but, it, but hopefully by tomorrow it would be dry out. It would be dried out, or maybe I would be uh, just 
watering the trees after they're already soaked kind of a thing. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. This is our midweek drop. It's a beautiful day on the balcony. I don't, I don't think we'll probably, I, I think we're well into this. It's getting warmer and everything's waking up and blooming. And uh, I appreciate you and Frida appreciates you. And our next drop will be, we'll probably do something on Friday and then Saturday and then Saturday Night Live Bonsai. Those are always exciting. You never know what's gonna uh, happen, but I'm gonna risk it and I'm gonna cover, <clears throat> I'm gonna cover a topic that I really enjoy. And that is uh, pines um, and uh, candle cutting. Candle cutting of pines. And uh, thank you so much for watching.